Hi there. I've had a lot of emails from people asking me about how to train for a fight or how to uh, take some of the information from a lesson or from a course or from a DVD and apply that in a fight situation. Well, it depends on many things. If it's a sports fight, you train one way. If it's training for self-defense, you train it slightly differently. But there are some principles that we use that you should use when training. Okay, and that's to break things down. Now, you know that we break things down, for example, what we call players. It's a breakdown of an individual technique into little bits that make it work. And so you do the same principle with a fight. So we'll take a very simple example. Let's say you've watched a boxing match and you see somebody land a great jab, just as a very basic example. So you look at that jab, look at the different ways it's been applied and the different ways it's landed and how it's been defended and all the other things that happen from it missing entirely to landing amazingly well. So you've got to look at it. Then you've got to analyze that as to how and why did it land? What was the attacker doing that made it work? What was the defender doing that made it not work for the defender or allowed the punch to land? So there's a whole host of things going on just in one simple little thing like a jab landing. How and why? And they're very silly little questions that we ask all the time like why, 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 why? But it's an important question and it's a great one. It's one you need to understand why you're actually asking why. Okay, so how would you train it? How would you make sure that you've got a better chance of landing your technique? Well, like everything, the only way is to practice it and to train it. So you need to practice that technique until you get pretty okay with it, you feel comfortable with it. And then you've got to make it so that you're uncomfortable with it. And you'll build this up in stages. So for example, the simple jab. You might start work doing it in shadows, in thin air. You might then move on to hitting the back. If you do pad work, you might have a pad work guy hold a pad up for you, moving around and doing it on the moon. But sooner or later, you've got to do it against somebody else to truly know if it's going to work for you. And that is something that you would build up as well. You may decide that you want to practice this jab. And one way is to pick an area of the body. I used to do this a lot. I'd be looking to hit somebody in the shoulder rather than in the face because I didn't want to hurt my sparring partners or my training partners. And I might even tell them before we spar, look, the only place I'm going to try to land my jab is just there on you. I'm not even going to try to hit you in the face. You can hit where you like, you do whatever you want, but my jab is only going to go there and my straight right is only going to go there. Maybe even your hooks, maybe, maybe I will leave the head alone. That to me is the head and I'm going to hit there and I'll hit it hard. So you've got to then understand how to land the technique. Now you build this up. You'll have a training partner who works with you. Eventually they'll start working against you. And then not only will they be working against you, you'll build it up to the point whereby the training partner is trying to take your face off whilst you're trying to do your technique. But you've got to do this with an element of safety because if, for example, you're working on a joint lock, you don't want to get to the stage whereby you break somebody's joint or they break your joint just to try and prove that it works. We know joint locks work once they're on. We know they can break things once they're on. Just like we know that a, a good solid smack in the face can knock somebody out. A good kick to the head can knock somebody out. We don't have to be kicking and punching our training partners in the head as hard as possible every time we train to try and prove that. So <clears throat> there comes a point 
in training where you have to be safe enough not to hurt your training partner. But that will not be at the detriment of getting your ability levels right. Now, for example, I've said this many times, sometimes in training you will aim to miss your training partner's head so that you can put a full on, full wallop strike through into thin air. This does not translate to missing in a real fight. I'll explain why for those who question me. Let's take another very simple example like a darts player. And he's throwing treble twenties non-stop till he gets down his score, whatever. <clears throat> but for example, the treble twenties block can't get to it. So he goes for treble 19. He's aiming at treble 19, so he hits treble 19. He doesn't suddenly think, I'm aiming at treble 19, uh-oh, I don't know why, I've suddenly gone up and gone for treble 20, because that's what I've been training to do. It's absolute rubbish. You train to hit what you're aiming at. Okay, so these people who say that, oh, you deliberately miss their head, in a real fight you'll miss somebody punching in the head, no. I've deliberately hit what I've aimed at. In a real fight, you'll be aiming at the head, or the jaw, or the nose, or whatever it may be. You're training to hit what you're aiming at. You're not training to miss. And there's a massive difference between the two. The end result is the same. You're missing because you're choosing to. Other people are missing because they're not hitting what they're aiming at. So you train to hit what you're aiming at. Now sometimes for the safety of your training partner you will be aiming to miss. And you may not be going full power. So there's all sorts of things you need to do to keep the training safe. But you have to break things down into the small little components again. So let's say for example you've seen a uh, a sports fight and you've seen somebody do a great technique and it took two or three seconds to, to get everything right and they win the fight. Well you've got to break down that two or three seconds of what they did into all the stages of what happened. So for example they might have done a takedown, got on top, smacked them in the face, won the fight. Well for you to replicate that you've got to get the distance and the timing right to get in on the takedown without getting hurt. You've got to achieve the right grips and they be in the right place, take the balance, driving through to achieve the takedown. You've then got to get past their legs, for example, get on top, ready to do your strike and be in the correct position for that. But you've then got to deliver the strike correctly. You've got to ensure that the other person isn't in a position where it's very easy for them to defend themselves, pull you down, whatever it may be. So all of those things and more happened throughout that take down, get on top, smack. So you have to break it down and train little, little bits of it to get it right. Now this sounds like that you'd be doing so much training that you could never ever move on to another technique because it could take a lifetime to master that. Look at boxing, four punches, four basic punches, lifetime to master. But that's not the case, you're training principles and you're understanding so much more if you do it this way. You're understanding so much more about techniques that you can apply those same principles to lots of other things. If on that take down, get on top, smack him in the face example, you understand the principles of getting in on somebody to grab a hold of them without <clears throat> taking any damage on the way in, then you can apply that for all of your entries, can't you? Whether it be higher, lower, midsection, whatever it may be. Whether you're getting in to, to do a takedown, a throw, a trip, whatever it may be, you're still getting that entry and you're learning from doing it 
on that previous technique. Once you've got them down, you're learning how to get in a position to be dominant, ready to strike. And that same principle will apply in many, many areas. Once you've got yourself in a position ready to strike, you should be balanced, timing right, distance right, ready to deliver full power. Again, you're learning how to do that for many, many different scenarios from that one little bit of training. So that gives you hopefully an idea of how we train things so that you can become good at a lot of things by practicing one little bit. And that's how we do things on our courses and things like that. We will show you one little bit, which is a great way to train, which isn't just for that one little bit, which is the biggest misconception, biggest mistake people often make. It's not training for that one little itty bitty technique or that one particular way of doing things. It's a way of giving you a ton of information from one technique which you can then apply to lots of other things. Which is why sometimes we will show a different technique to show some of the same but a few other principles that you may need when doing that type of stuff. That all sounds a little bit higgledy-piggledy but if you understand what I've been going on about in this little clip you will understand what I mean by that. When you're practicing certain things in isolation, sometimes other things happen and you need to be doing something else. So we will show you different techniques which allow you to branch off and move around and still achieve the goal that you're after. Now, like I've always said, we make no excuse for the fact that this is learned material and you've got to trade it and understand it and learn it. And that's what you do with our courses. You go step by step and gradually you get better and better and better and better. And you can take the principles that you learn from each individual lesson and apply it to everything that you're currently doing. And everything that you're currently doing will incrementally get better as you learn from each of our lessons. It's not just the lessons that you're doing. It's not just the lessons that you get better at. You can apply it to everything that you're doing and make that much better and much better and much better. And that is how our top guys approached our courses and programs. And they understood to apply what they were being shown to everything that they already know. And that's why they're international coaches, national coaches, area coaches, county coaches, etc., etc., Because they've been able to take that information and put it into what they currently know. And they've been able to do it very, very quickly because they've taken the principles and applied it to what they know and increased that. And that's what it's all about, making you as good as you can possibly be. That's my job. Doesn't matter how good I am, doesn't matter what I know, it only matters what I can teach you and what I can show you to do and what I can help you do. That's the most important part. I know what I can do, I know what I'm capable of doing. My job is to make you so much better. Anyway, that's enough rabbiting on from me for now. Uh, keep the questions coming and I'll keep answering. Thanks very much.